I'm here at Black Horse Road in North East London. Uh, wait a second. This is Black Horse Lane in South East London. Oh no. Hold on a second. I'm here at Black Horse Road in North East London. Although, confusingly, there is also a Black Horse Lane up here. Black Horse Road is on the Victoria Line and is the final stop before the terminus, Walthamstow Central. Or the first stop out of the terminus, depending which way you're going. It's also on the Gospel Oak to Barking Line of the Overground, but its history is rather longer than that. Originally, Black Horse Road was a different station, located here, just on the other side of the road bridge from the current station. It was opened in 1894 by a company called the Tottenham and Forest Gate Railway. This ran from South Tottenham to Woodgrange Park. This line was built to link the unsuccessful Tottenham and Hampstead Junction Railway to the London Tilbury and South End Railway. I've talked about the history of this line in more detail in another video, which I will put a link to in the description below. Long story short, the Tottenham and Hampstead Junction Railway was a joint venture between the Midland Railway and the London Tilbury and South End to give the Midland Railway access to East London, South End and Tilbury. This resulted in the creation of the Gospel Oak to Barking Line, or the Goblin as it's commonly known. It was also hoped that building a bunch of stations along this line would stimulate the growth of housing, which would generate more traffic for the railway, which, of course, meant money. Black Horse Road was a smallish station with two platforms and a goods yard, fairly typical for the suburbs. The presence of goods sidings encouraged the development of industry in the local area, which I can't imagine went down too well with the people already living here. There seems to have been some confusion over what the station should be called. Sometimes it was referred to as Black Horse Road, three words, and sometimes as Black Horse Road, two words. Sometimes it was called both at the same time. Under British Railways there were signs with both names on the platforms. It was only when the Underground arrived in 1968 that consistency was finally achieved. The history of Black Horse Road is not that eventful. The London Tilbury and South End was bought out by the Midland Railway in 1912, meaning that the Goblin was now controlled outright by them. The Midland amalgamated with a number of other companies in 1923 to form the London Midland and Scottish Railway, and the LMS was nationalised in 1948. The line did not bring in the commuters that its owners hoped for. The problem was that it just wasn't very convenient, and there were other railways in the vicinity that were. Over the years, a number of the stations were closed down, usually with the excuse of wartime economies. In 1963, it looked like the line would be closed altogether, but local pressure got it saved. Black Horse Road lost its last remaining goods sidings in 1964. At the time, though, something else was burrowing its way towards Black Horse Road. The Victoria Line was under construction. In central London, the aim of the Victoria Line was to take the pressure off other lines by providing a direct route from north to south across the city. Northeast of the city, it was to have kind of the opposite function, to connect with underused lines and thus give people living on those better access to central London. Black Horse Road was in the plans as far back as 1948, although how the tube would get there took some figuring out. One possibility was to build the line in a tunnel, which of course is what we got. The other would have seen the line surface at South Tottenham and run alongside the Goblin. At Black Horse Road, it would dive back underground for the final stretch to Walthamstow Central, which back then was called Walthamstow Ho Street. The final route was settled on in 1953. By the time the Victoria Line was confirmed, Black Horse Road had become rather shabby and run down. I nearly wrote distinctly shabby in the script, but on the Goblin in the 60s there was nothing distinctive about a shabby station. It wouldn't do for the kind of traffic London Transport envisaged. So a new station was planned. This was unusual for the Victoria Line, at least for the initial Walthamstow to Victoria section. The line was built as cheaply as London Transport could get away with. Nearly every stop was an interchange, so they were simply built into existing stations. The result was that the stations soon became overcrowded. Black Horse Road was different. 
It got a full dedicated station building at street level, designed by Kenneth Seymour. I have to say, I'm not a fan. It's just not a very interesting building. The heavy lifting in terms of aesthetics is done by the artwork. The stations along the Victoria line have tiled motifs in the recesses at platform level. The ones at Black Horse Road are, no surprise, a black horse. I think it looks sort of Greek. These horses were designed by Hans Unger, who also did Oxford Circus, Green Park and Seven Sisters. There's another horse mural outside by David McFall, which I think is my favourite feature of the station. When the new station building opened in 1968, the Goblin platforms were still in their old location. In 1981, they were demolished and new platforms were built on the other side of the road bridge, giving better access from the underground building. The Goblin just sort of limped along into the 2000s. It wasn't electrified and trains were typically two coaches long, nothing by the standards of London commuter rail. But the thing about railways in London is that, overall, they have this tendency to just keep getting busier. So the Goblin was incorporated into the London Overground in 2007, the thinking being that it could be a useful relief route. And so it proved to be. In 2018, the line was electrified, and now Black Horse Road sees four trains an hour. These days, Black Horse Road has the somewhat dubious claim to fame of being the least used station on the Victoria line. I'm not trying to steal Jeff Marshall's bit, I promise. I find it a little bit ironic, because it's one of the few stations that doesn't feel like an afterthought. Well, if the tube made sense, I wouldn't have much to talk about, would I? I do hope you enjoyed this equine tale from the tube. If so, please do leave a like and consider subscribing for more. I would like, as I always do, to thank my donors on Ko-fi, on Patreon and here on YouTube. You are the blacksmith to my black horse. And I'll see you all again very soon for another Tale from the Tube. <laughs>